Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cuban. In this video, we're gonna take a look at Semantic Link, or as its short name is, Senpai or Senpi? Probably Senpai because of Python. So what is this? This allows you from Python to connect to a Power BI data set or a Power BI semantic model, hence semantic link. And you may be sitting there going like, I don't know Python. That's okay. The primary audience of this is for data scientists, but if you are someone that wants to orchestrate things or to validate things from a Power BI data set perspective, and you want to be in a notebook, this allows you to do that as well. So while there are a lot of data science things that you can do with this, I'm going to actually show you a demo of where we can actually go and like just look at the Power BI semantic model and validate certain things. Well, what if I want to use this with pandas? So a pandas data frame as a concept inside of Python. Data scientists use that a lot to leverage and work with data. Inside of Semantic Link, we use a fabric data frame, which is actually subclassed from a pandas data frame. So it is compatible. It adds a few extra things as part of it. So you can leverage measures, metadata about a, a given semantic model. But if you are interested in panda data frames, this is compatible with that. So, all right, enough of all this talking. You know what you like to do it here on Guy in a Cube. Let's do what? Let's head over to my machine. Okay, we are looking at a notebook inside of Microsoft Fabric. It is attached to a lake house, but honestly, we can ignore the lake house here because this is just going to be going against the Power BI data set, which is actually powered through the Parquet Delta files that are generated from the lake house. So that's where the lake house is coming in. So the first thing I did was I installed Semantic Link. And so this is just something you have to run to get context out of this. So that is done already within this session. So what can we do with this? So I'm importing Senpai Fabric, and then I'm actually going and running to get a list of given data sets, and then I'm outputting this data frame as part of it. So let's go and run that and see what we get. And we can see that we've got two data sets here. So the first data set, that's the default data set that was created with the lake house. And then we've got the data model. This is the model I created. It is a direct lake model, a semantic model, data set, whatever the name is that you choose. This is the one that I'm going to go act on as part of the rest of this notebook. And we can see here that I put the data model into this variable, my data set. So now what else can we do here? We can actually materialize and show the relationships that are within this data set. So you'll see here, this is my data set. So this is the data model. And I'm gonna go and get all of the relationships because I'm calling list relationships off of this senpai relationships piece. And we're gonna plot those relationships. This is amazing, watch this. Whoa we can visualize our relationships inside of the notebook. So as a data scientist, this is amazing. So you can actually see how are things relating? What are those fields that are there? Different dimensions going against the fact tables. This is bananas. Patrick always says that uh, direct lake is super fast. And the item in here I wanna run is an actual DMV. So this DMV is gonna go get temperature based on the data that's inside of the model itself. So what I wanna check here is are items cached for the data set or is it cold at this point? Because you know, Patrick said something was fast and I want to validate it, right? I want to make sure that he's not, he's not playing some games with me, right? So I'm going to run this DMV. All right. So if we look at the dictionary temperature, we'll see that it says not applicable. So this means that nothing's been loaded. So that means the cache is cold from a direct lake perspective. So now what I want to do is I want to go run some DAX. You can actually see here, there's an evaluate DAX function as part of Senpai that I can go ahead and actually run this. So I'm saying run it against this model and here's my DAX, which is in this variable, which is just an evaluate. So let's go and run that. And then look, we've got our data back. This is the data that would be returned from that DAX expression. I can run DAX. I can run DMV queries. Basically anything you could think of that you would want to run against the XMLA endpoint, you can run here. This is going to run it. So what if you don't know Python? I'm going to add another code base here. Let me go and copy my evaluate statement. And I'm going to do something really cool here. So I'm saying percent percent DAX. So we're saying we're going to use DAX and I'm just giving it the data model name. And then I just run the evaluate, right? How much Python is that? Not a whole lot. It's not a lot at all. I did percent percent DAX. So you got to do a little bit of the header stuff to make sure you've loaded and imported the right things. And then we can do percent percent DAX and you're ready to go. 
So let's see if this works. We get the same output. I can do the same thing with the DMV as well, right? So up here where we did the DMV, I could just do percent percent DAX and throw this in there and it'll return the value, which is great. Okay, so now we've ran this DAX. Let's go rerun the DMV and see what we got. And we can see now that we have temperature here, which means the data is actually loaded. The cache was cold and now I've warmed it up a little bit, right? So what I wanted to test was for my cold start, if I go to create a report on this data set using direct lake, how fast is it on that first hit? So now is going to refresh the data set, which will basically reset the cache is effectively what it's doing. It does a couple of other things. If you've added data from a Delta perspective, the data set's looking at an older version. You can do versioning in Delta. And so this makes sure we get the latest version. So clear the cache, reset, and then go run a report and see how fast this is. So I'm going to come down here and I've got some Python code here that's actually leveraging analysis services libraries. That's actually going to go through and refresh this item. You can see this code here, word of caution. This is in public preview. This can change. So this works right now. This may change later on as they add or remove things based on feedback. And so if this code doesn't run for you, we'll try something else, right? So this is working as of the time that I'm recording this video. All right, let's go and run this. And that was pretty quick. So now let's go back up and run our DMV and make sure that the cache is now cold. And we can see here, we're starting from a clean slate. So now let's go and we've got our data set, the data model. I'm gonna say, create a report. And let's go see how fast this is. So let me go grab, we'll grab month and we'll grab a total trip amount. And then we'll make that a bar chart. And again, this was coming off of a cold cache. So now let's bring in year. We'll make that a slicer. This is all coming off of the Delta files that are in the lake, which is bananas. And we'll do a vertical list, right? We can slice and dice. And then we'll bring in, uh, let's do average trip. We'll make that a card. And then we'll bring in uh, average trip price. We'll make that a card. And you may be wondering like how many rows I'm actually working on. This might be small data from your perspective. Let's see, 1 billion rows. Oh my gosh, look at that. We'll go format, call out value. Let's change that to none. That's a lot of data. Now watch, let's just go and slice and dice. Let's see, this was running off of a cold cache. So it's pretty quick. We can slice and dice off of uh, Direct Lake and we're going and getting that data. So Direct Lake is fast, sure, but the real key here is I use Semantic Link to go and validate certain things from a diagnostic perspective on the data set. This is one way that you can leverage Semantic Link. Obviously from a data science perspective, this is amazing because we can complete that circle, right? I can leverage measures that the business has created to help validate data that I'm potentially working on from a data science perspective and, and populate it back in. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are you using Semantic Link. Did you know you could do the percent percent DAX? That's amazing. As always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.